Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk about how to find clients. This is probably one of the hardest things if you were just starting out freelancing. If you figure this out, the rest of your life will be completely different. I guarantee it. If you figure out how to source clients, how to make money in a new and different way outside of employment in a job at an hourly rate or salary, this will radically shape your life. Now, we just need to begin on the same page. There is no one formula that is going to work for everyone. There are a lot of YouTube gurus out there who are gonna talk about if you do this exact formula, it's gonna get you to fill your calendar or it's gonna get you to six figures a month or whatever that is. Whatever the promise is, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's because for everyone, it's gonna be a different process. And that shouldn't intimidate you. If anything, that should give you confidence that when you find it and you figure it out, you're going to unleash a power inside of you. Tony Robbins talk right now. You're going to unleash something inside of you that you have probably never experienced before at this level. And it's going to help you grow, thrive, and just have a really good life on top of that. So let's hop into this. I'm going to first start with how I found my first clients. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to walk into some different ways you could find clients, different paths you can go, things you could search uh, online, different places you could put your profile, different ways you could optimize with like SEO and things like that. And then we're going to talk about what type of clients I have now that are different than the clients I had then, because what worked then doesn't necessarily work for me now. So we're going to talk about all three of those in this video. If you're ready, stay tuned. Let's hop in. First and foremost, who were my first clients? The first clients that I found with a sustainable, long-term, consistent clientele was through running Google ads. So as a website designer, I ran Google ads for people who searched Squarespace website designer. Not Squarespace websites, not Squarespace website design, but what Squarespace website designers or developers, things like that. So I created a Google ads campaign. I knew how to do that at the time. It's really not that hard. And at this point, I don't know if it's the best because it might be more expensive because there's just more competition. But if that's what you're looking to do and you want to try that, go all in. I give you full reign. Try it. If it works for you, awesome. So I set that up and not even a week later, I got my first project. And that was an incredible experience because overall, when I got that first project, it was $1,750, $1,500 for a website. I did an upsell for $250. I have another video somewhere on my YouTube channel about how to do upsells. So if you're curious about that, look for it down below. But I did the project, I did the upsell, I sold the project, I did the upsell, and that experience changed my life. So my first clientele were people who were looking for a new website, they didn't have a website before. Some of them might have had a website before, but they were looking to build a website with someone. They were looking to really work with me. And they hired me because they saw me as a human. And that was something that was really important for me that I didn't know would be important when I started out. So when I built my website, I had my services page, my portfolio, my homepage, but I also had my about page. And my about page showed that I did this charity work and that I was like a human and I smiled and I showed pictures of me with other people. And that really allowed people to connect. There were so many phone calls that when I got on the call with the client, one of the first things they said is, I chose you because what you do or who you are or the, the charity work you do or the fact that you are a human, not a business. And so that may be something that could work for you. Again, no proven path, no clear path but that's what worked for me. Now, let's rewind the story just a bit. Eight months before that first client happened, before I launched Google Ads, before my business really took a whole new level, before I learned the joy of, of having this ability to create new income streams, what happened? I tried this with a friend. It did not work. We tried to sell websites. We were emailing people. We were messaging people, messaging businesses. We did not get one hit. And we did that for a good two to three months and we did not get one hit. We almost got two hits, but at the end of the day, they never worked out. Can I explain why? No. Do I know why? Not at all. But what I do know is that when I tried again, it ended up working. So that might actually be the tip to follow, not Google ads or not specifically how you sell a package or what you sell or your about page. 
those are all nice those are all parts of it but i think the core aspect here is just try try as as lame as the motto is try again now let's list off a bunch of resources that you can use if you're looking for clients i don't know which one's going to work for you but i'm going to list off a bunch of different resources that you can consider to start out and the basic premise here is that you already have a website a portfolio and some basic understandings of how you're going to do your process so if you have those let's begin and let's talk about different places you could get yourself out there and let the world know that you are a website designer Okay, so a few websites you'll want to go and create a portfolio on. And you might say, oh, I'm too good for this, but do what you feel is best. Again, we have no idea what's gonna work. And if you go to YouTube, you could probably watch a few videos of people who crush it on these platforms. So build a portfolio on fiverr.com, build a portfolio on Upwork, build one on freelancer.com, build one on, what is it, peopleperhour.com, Toptal, if that makes sense for you. If you're like a, a developer, you actually really understand code at a deep level right now. If you don't, that's fine. But make portfolios there. Go and make your accounts there. Do a Google search as well and look for more tools just like that. There are new ones coming out all the time. So you can look into those resources. Then get your name out there. Put yourself in Facebook groups for everything Squarespace. Anything that's related to Squarespace, you need to be a part of. So get into the Facebook groups, get into the forum, the Squarespace Circle forum. Uh, just Google it if you, if you wanna know more about it or how to get in. Get into any types of conversations you can. Following, you want to publish this and post this on your social media. You want to get this out to everyone. Uh, you want to make sure people know that you are a website designer. So let them know and let them know again and let them know again. You want to tell them over and over and over again. You don't want to just say it once and think everyone's checked in their box that they know you're a website designer. You want to let people know when you do a project, update people. You don't have to blast them and you don't have to tell them why they need to work with you or whatever. You just can let them know I'm designing websites and I'm designing websites and I love designing websites. From there, let's talk about your friends and family and mentors. Tell your friends, tell your family. When you meet new people and they say, what do you do? You tell them you're a Squarespace designer. Tell them you're a freelance Squarespace designer. Let them know. Even if you're just starting out, let them know. As, as many people that you get in contact with and you let them know that this is the work you do, you're gonna position yourself in just an amazing, incredible way. And you don't know where that lead is gonna come from or the project or the opportunity. Another big one that I totally looked over but is so important is update your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is a place where I have gotten actually a few clients who have been superb clients, like really good clients. One of my favorite clients over the last two years, I've been with them for over two years, uh, came to me through a LinkedIn search. So create profiles on the internet, join community groups, anything you can. If you have tools or resources that you can develop or you have developed, get them into uh, different communities. I, I think like of ghost plugins, you can go in there and submit your plugin as a resource for them. And that gets your name out there and make sure your website's updated and make sure you're providing value. But from there, you just put yourself out there more and more and more. You'll open up opportunities for new people to find you, new people to run into you, and that means new client opportunity. If you wanna run ads, I am not against it. I am 100% for it, but just know that you are spending money to make it work. And so Facebook ads, Instagram ads can work. They're more interest-based than specifically search-based, which can be a little bit difficult if you're just starting out or if you don't have experience with it. If you have experience with it, that's really good. Make it happen, but why not try it? Give yourself a budget of two to $300. If you have the ability, give yourself a budget of two to $300, set up ads, run them in a very targeted way against a group that you really think will make sense and go from there. And the basic premise here is ask anyone, tell anyone, let them know that this is what you do. Let the world know that you are a website designer. Make sure your dog knows that you are a website designer. Everyone should know that you are a designer. I know when I started out, I was intimidated to say that because I thought people would think of me way up here when I'm just starting out. And that may be true, but you want to clarify to the world, to people that you are in this business now. And the point is not that that day you are amazing at it, but in a year, 
they're gonna have anchored that from a year before that you are a designer, that you are a designer. And so over time, it just becomes very natural and normal. When I first told my family I was a freelancer, they thought I was crazy. I've been doing it for four or five years now, freelancing, running a business, whatever they think it is at this point, but there's a lot more confidence that I'm able to take care of myself and that it's working. All right, so this third part, how has my client base changed over time? The one thing would be is I just really don't work with smaller projects anymore. And that's because I know from my time and my energy, which I wanna prioritize you and being able to make videos like this to help you grow as a designer, I wouldn't be able to do both. So doing a bunch of 2K projects, even though they may be in my wheelhouse, and recording content at this level would just be way too much. So in this case right now, I really focus on bigger projects. And then when those bigger projects come, I focus on finding projects that solve problems that I want to solve, if that makes sense. Basically, I'm looking for projects that will make me a better designer, a better consultant, a better Squarespace expert, those types of things. I personally don't want to take on big, complicated e-commerce projects, even if they paid well, because I don't want to become an expert with Squarespace e-commerce because that's not really my focus. I really like Squarespace for small businesses that are looking to expand or grow. Maybe they might start as e-commerce, but again, at a very basic level, I'm not looking for this huge, complicated website on Squarespace. I'm looking for people who are starting. They want an online brochure. They want a place for their high-end clients to be able to visit and see that they're legit, that type of thing. Making sure all the links work, the buttons work, the site works, all of that. So it's not 100% about a dollar amount. It may sound like that, but the dollar amount is often reflective of the level of need for the client and what they're looking for and how invested they are in the project. So that's typically what I look for. But when I start out, I would basically take anything. Uh, if it came my way, I would do my best to land the project and work with it. When I started to say no to projects was when, not just when I had enough projects, but when the projects themselves didn't make sense or seemed just too complicated or just didn't make sense on Squarespace. Sometimes clients come and they say, I wanna build this fancy directory. And I'm like, actually, you should probably do that on a different tool because you're gonna, it's gonna be chaotic to try to customize this to the level of detail you're gonna need. It just doesn't make sense. So go use a different tool. But for now, I'd recommend working with that designer or that developer who could help you with that tool. All right, thank you for watching. If you got value from today's video, hit the like button. You hit the like button, it lets me know that you got value from this content. Let's the YouTube algorithm know some fancy stuff, but it lets me know that you got value from today's content. On top of that, if you have any questions or if you find a way that works for you to get clients, drop it in the comments below. It will help the community so much to know that these systems are working. Mention what works for you. If you feel comfortable, mention what works for you. That would be amazing. And then on top of that, if you want more content like this and value, check out our website, but also subscribe. We post videos three times a week, I think, four times a week maybe, three times a week right now, maybe even more. So check out the content below, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.